So let's check in with our personal trainer today, Jesus. We're in Matthew chapter 9 and 10 on our reading plan. Um, but what really stuck out to me, um, they've asked uh, Jesus, Jesus, John's disciples, John the Baptist's disciples have come up to Jesus and asked um, Jesus why um, that his disciples are not fasting. And I think that's really interesting um, because they'd made fasting um, a rule. They'd made fasting a re about a religion, and um, that's what diet culture is, right? Um, and Jesus is saying, hey, this is it's about a relationship. And right now, I'm here in relation, in person with them. Um, why, are they why do they need to fast right now? There will be a time. And I love that because what that tells me is that there's a time and a place for everything. Just like there's a time for feasting. There's a time for fasting. There's a time to, for maintaining. And God. God ordained it, and Jesus then showed us. He fleshed it out in this new covenant, in this new way. With Once he came on the scene, this is how you live it out. And so there's those times for feasting. There's those times for fasting. There's times that you just are neither. You're just living and maintaining. Um, here's the thing about diet um, versus fasting. Diet changes what you're seeking, and fasting is changing how you're seeking it the value you know when you're dieting you're denying yourself um food for a physical reason but when you are fasting you are denying yourself so that you can feast on god that you can feast on his word and so he tells them this he's talking he's like listen this i've come here to do something different and he uses this couple analogies he uses an analogy about an old garment, like an old shirt that's been worn out and it's thin. And he says, no one patches an old garment with an unshrunken cloth because the patch will pull away from the garment and make the tear worse. And so he's saying, you know, you got this old shirt, you're not gonna put like this brand new, really strong patch on it. It's just gonna create a bigger tear on the top and the bottom and on the side. That, that, that doesn't work. Like. Um, it is time to eat, uh, to get something new, to do a new thing. Um, don't just put a new patch. Get a new garment if it's that worn out, right? If it's not being effective anymore. If it's not covering your body the way that it needs to cover your body, then it's not effective. And then he also uses this idea of new wine and a new wine skin. And I love this new wine um, we get to see in the very first miracle we going back to the first miracle you know he turns the water into wine and it, it is this significant thing it represents this intimacy that jesus brought to be able to that you open the door for you to be able to have this indwelling of the holy spirit um, in the past, the Holy Spirit kind of would settle and then pick up and settle and then pick up and settle, pick up and settle. That's why that uh, psalm that says, um, don't take your Holy Spirit from me because he would really get up and leave and go here and go here. But now the new covenant, the new way, the new wine is that he dwells within me. I don't lose him. He's with me all the time. And so um, it is this idea of the my fruit of the spirit that's within me, the character that's been developed within me. Uh, um, so that's this wine, this new wine that we have access to, the new covenant that we have access to. And he's saying, hey, we can't put this new thing and make it fit in your old religious way of doing things in the old covenant. It doesn't fit. It's not going to work. Instead, Instead, you need a, a new vessel. You need a new wineskin. You know, in the old old covenant, the the temple that the withheld um, God's presence was this building, and every you had to be able to go to that building to experience His presence. And now He needs a new vessel. And guess what the new vessel is, y'all? It's my body. This is my, your body. That is the new vessel. And he's saying, hey, I need a new vessel. And it's going to be one that has skin on it. And this is the vessel. I'm going to indwell it. I'm going to take my spirit and I'm going to put myself in that. And you're going to put me on like a glove. I'm going to take, you're going to take on my shape. I'm going to take on your shape. We're going to be one. We're going to move together in um this world and you are going to be the tool in this body that take brings heaven to earth that shows people my kingdom and allows
you get to be part of the plan that that they they hear about me they see about see learn about me from you like you are the vessel this body is the vessel and so um, I, I want I want to make sure and to do my part to take care of this vessel so that when I go into the world to do those things, I'm able-bodied. My vessel is able-bodied to do, be able to do, to be able to do those things. So make me a fit vessel to carry the grace, to hold and move and give away the blessings of God, the fruit of God. Like make me a fit vessel a new vessel for this new wine. And that's what we're doing. We're allowing Jesus to train us in godliness, to train us physically, um, to teach us how to, to uh, new, give our body nutrients, to hydrate our bodies, to rest our bodies, um, so that we're fit vessels so that we can carry this good news. We can carry the fruit. We can carry the blessings. We can carry the grace and the forgiveness and the love. We want to be fit vessels. And so um, that's what he's leading us to do when we'll follow him. Um, and that means letting go of the world's ways, letting go of the old, the things that we've thought that we've done in the past that had not served our vessel well and doing it God's way instead. And I love that. Um, we can trust him, y'all. We can trust him. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't be just a hearer. Be a doer of the word. You know, as a, <laughs> I can write a plan all day long as a personal trainer um, for what my clients should do. I can take their stats and I can write them a, a plan, a, a weightlifting plan. I can prescribe them the amount of cardio. I can help them figure out the best amount of protein and help them get in the fruits and the veggies. And all that. I can give them all that information, but if they don't take it and do something with it, nothing changes, right? Nothing changes. And so that is what we have here. We have all the things to do. And now, are we going to be a doer of the word and go and do them? Um, so I hope that you will. I hope that um, you'll take these into the weekend. Don't let the weekend be a week ending. Um, continue to follow your personal trainer and do what he's asking you to do, uh, to learn and to grow, even on the weekend. All right? Which includes rest. All right, have a good one. Bye.